The sun is hiding and the magpie is casting. Hello and welcome to all my viewers from around the world. Magpie842 coming at you with another 1v1 replay, taking a look today at the new United Kingdom forces. Spawning on the west hand side of the map, we have Storm Tiger Sage 6. And spawning on the right side of the map, we have Please Call Me Dad. Uh, who I imagine I'll just call Dad, and uh, the British player I'll probably just call Sturm. So uh, I'll just—I'm gonna—I'm gonna cut to the chase with you guys here. I'm just gonna level with you. This is an early morning cast, and uh, against the better advice of uh, many of my friends and indeed my doctor. In fact, no, just I made that up. I went out partying last night, so my throat is just a little sore. We're gonna see how the voice holds out. Should be good. Um, I've got a nice cup of tea here. English breakfast, of course, the tea of choice as we. Uh, proceed into the uh, morning stage of the day and uh, uh, yep yeah, so um, I uh, I checked out onto the uh, onto the forums today and there's uh, been a whole host of balance changes um, I didn't actually make any notes which I, I knew I should have done if I'm gonna come casting because that is it's, it's, it's like pages of changes but uh, essentially there's been a lot of tweaking the United States forces there um, uh, the Sherman and the easy eight have been considerably buffed um, there have been a number of changes the uh, the Russian quad half track has been nerfed uh, and uh, the Overcommand have had a, a couple of slight changes, including, very importantly from my point of view, Volks Grenadiers have had their um, uh, grenade replaced with an incendiary grenade, I believe. Uh, or, or maybe this is a change that's going to happen? I don't know, it seems, it seems, not, to be, uh, seems not to be changed. Oh well, anyway, so I think that these are changes which are, are going to happen soon if they haven't happened already. Um, so, uh, we're about to have our first engagement here between the new British Tommy unit. So for those of you who didn't watch my previous video where I did do a little uh, kind of uh, rundown on the differences with Tommies, basically the Tommy is um, quite an expensive unit, 280 manpower, so we're looking at rifleman costs, but uh, they get a, su a substantial boost to their firepower uh, depending on the level of cover that they're in. So they get a decent boost in, uh, in soft cover and they get a good boost in hard cover. New machine gun uh, this building of course counts as hard cover, so their rate of fire is quite good. And um, yeah, their reinforced cost is something like 35 manpower per Tommy, because we have another engagement beginning down here in the south, this time some Storm Pioneers in uh, soft cover, engaging some Tommies in hard cover, and I think that's a fight that they're going to want to retreat from. Um, yeah, 35 manpower per head to reinforce the Tommy, so not a cheap unit really, and um, honestly, I, I'm not really sure that its performance at the moment um, reflects that cost. Um, but, you know, people aren't really used to using the new British units or, or playing against them, so we'll have to see how that works out. The uh, Schwer of a Max Schlepper here for uh, Please Call Me Dad is going to move on out. He's probably going to look to establish his battle gripper headquarters, probably maybe in Dnevon, that means nearby, Alf Deutsch. Maybe around this sort of area. Um, on this map, uh, one of my favourite places to put it is uh, just here, because uh, it's uh, occluded from the large amount of enemy vision and, uh, and weaponry for this uh, hedge here. You have a nice building nearby you can garrison should, uh, should the going get rough. And... Um, but it seems like uh, Dad's going to put it right about here, and that is uh, the Battle Gripper headquarters now on the way. Uh, these Tommies back here still proving a bother, but uh, being being flushed now by uh, storm troops, uh, storm planners, sorry, two squads of bulk, so they're going to want to get out of there. Meanwhile, the north side of the map has pretty much gone into the control of the Brits. Um, there are no Vermax, uh, sorry, no Overcommand units up there, so uh, securing himself a munitions point and a fuel point, and uh, I believe I can hear the Vickers machine gun. Damned yep. enemies trying to take a point from us. So the Vickers machine gun instantly suppressing and forcing a fallback quickly out of Dad there on those uh, on those Volks grenadiers. That's going to take care of this middle victory point. And the Allied player just opening up a quick 46 point lead. 40, yep, there we go, 46 point lead. Neither playing have a neither player having uh, committed to a commander yet. So we'll keep an eye on that as the game progresses. The Battle Group Headquarters now complete, and uh, for the British player, we now have uh, Royal Engineers coming out, which means that he has gone for his Tech 1 building. He has the option now to go for the Snipers, the, uh, what is it, 6 pounder gun. Uh, he can build the mortar positions, and he can choose whether to go for both 4s or the AEC-10, so we'll see if he decides to go for either of those. The, uh, with the uh, okay, so he's decided to go for the bow four. Um, I think, given the fact that this is um, uh, victory points and that, uh, given the map, I think the bow four is going to be a really potent choice. Um, if I had to, oh wow, this area of the map has changed. There's no foliage around here. Interesting. Quite like that, I think. It does open the map up a bit. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I think a good place for a bow four then has got to be here because that's going to cover like three points and a command point. 
And here comes a flanking run as uh, Dad comes in with a lot of forces. Storm Pioneers forcing the Royal Engineers back behind cover as the Vickers now facing south. He's going to get one squad out of there. Is he going to go for a grenade? This seems like a good opportunity for a grenade. No, but not needed as the Storm Pioneers run down the Vickers MG and he should grab that. I really think he should grab the Vickers. It's a fantastically potent weapon. Um, Volk's Grenadiers are going to garrison this building. Seems like he has no interest in the Vickers at this stage. Maybe he's going to plan to grab it later as the Storm Pioneers advancing across negative cover. Going to lose a man, but that should be okay as with the support of the Volks, they'll be able to take out these Tommies in good order, I would have thought. The Tommies up to Veteran C1, and now the Storm Pioneers as well. Not so much difference in cost between the Storm Pioneers and the Tommies, actually, so... Both units able to vet up relatively rapidly against each other. And in comes a unit of Tommies from the north. It seems as though grenade package has not been researched yet. So there is no option to grenade these uh, these bolts in the building. As another squad of bolts going to move in and start securing the central victory point. If we look at the minimap, pretty much all combat on the map is focused around the center right here. And most units for both players are within a screen's, a screen's distance of what I'm looking at right here. So this is where it's all happening. And command point two has been reached as we have some uh, light, Jaeger light infantry coming out of a building just in time to help out in that engagement and the British forces forced back. I'd love to see Dad just grab this point just here, um, just to uh, just to stop losing victory points because he's, he's, he's like 83 tickets behind now, so that's um <coughs> that's a worry. As his squads are reinforced and rearmed, the British forces likewise coming back out. Seems like we have another Vickers gun being added in. And if we look at the top left and top right, you can see that Overcommand, even having, despite having to build a battle group headquarters, have six units. And I would say that they're all pretty potent combat units against just a five for uh, Stem Tiger Sage. So that loss of the Vickers gun, uh, pretty important. Now, I wonder, did he actually... Oh, you see, actually, maybe he didn't lose the Vickers gun. Sorry, I must have missed that. It's not here anymore, and there's a Vickers gun only on the British side, so it seems like he's managed to grab his Vickers back. And uh, the British forces now are going to be able to re-establish the Vickers into this building as a fight also occurring in the North Territory. These Jaeger Light Infantry are doing work. And a grenade coming into the building. That Vickers crew down to two men now. As Dad applying pressure in the middle. I'd still love to see him just grab this point. He still hasn't been able to. And the Vickers in a good position actually is going to force them all away, even though it is very damaged from just two men left on that crew. Meanwhile, in the north, the, Falsh, the uh, uh, Jaeger Light Infantry stand to be squad wiped here if they're unlucky. And they are. And that's 300 manpower, which uh, he's not going to see again. Please call me Dad. Probably just about breaking even in that fight. Up to four Volks, still still four Volks, so pretty numerous army here, but the Vickers are really doing a number on him. I'd love to see him try and get a Lig, probably, a Lig gun would do really well here. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, we may have an engagement here, just a little just a little scuffle over this point. The Vickers still in position though. Stem Tiger Sage being a little bit uh, ambitious moving his troops out into this area. Seems like he's researched the forward fallback point as his units are falling back directly to his battle group headquarters, which is all good and well, but consider the positioning, right? So if he was to position this truck here, his units would have less distance to go, and every time he wanted to move forces into the north area from that, they'd have a lot less distance to go. Now I know that sounds like a really small thing, but I've played over command long enough that I know that that makes a really, really big difference, okay? And I just don't really see the strategic uh, benefit of putting your um, truck here. Indeed, an anti-tank gun positioned here can ping this truck, so it would be even safer positioned here. So just a little tip. I, I, like, I don't know, feel free to correct me in the comments if you spotted something that I'm missing here, but I, I think that, that would be a superior placement. And if you're going to go for the um, early fallback HMG point research, crew has been lost to enemy um, action. Then uh, that's vital. Sorry, I'm not really covering the uh, <laughs> covering the battle. It seems like the British forces have uh, taken a bit of a beating whilst I was explaining that. Uh, they've lost one of their Vickers guns, and uh, uh, two other squads have been forced back and are now reinforcing. As we have here a Beaufort under construction, and that is more or less in the position where I said it should be. And that is going to start doing work. Oh, oh, oh! Immediately getting a squad wipe on those Volks. The Beaufort's essentially just a very big machine gun. Is uh, really going to start doing work. And that's going to be really difficult to dislodge. So I really think that the uh, overcommand player, please call me dad, should go for some light guns. He's getting from a Kettenwerfer, and that's fair enough, but Line's I don't really cut. know what that's going to be for. I mean, I guess it's a prophylactic for um, but it's a little, uh, a little early for armor to be coming out from the Brit player, really, for any, any serious armor. 
Now, let us just check the line of sight here for Please Call Me Dad. Yeah, he, of course he knows the Bofords is there because it fired at him earlier. So, I'm a little confused by the choice of Briquette and Warfare because if, if there's a Bofors, then there cannot be an AEC-10. And at this point, the AEC-10 scout car is pretty much the only armoured unit, except for a carrier, I suppose, the Universal Carrier, which the British player could pull out. So, this Rocket and Werfer perplexing me a little bit. We'll see what he uses it for. And, uh, getting a Bren gun onto his Tommies now. A couple of Bren guns. And also getting the uh, five-man squad upgrade. Is Sturm Tiger. Causing trouble, trying to take one of our points. And a squad of Storm Pioneers just being sent on a nice little uh, diversionary attack up to the north just to grab that victory point and help him out in the score the states. And I really Please like this move from Please Call Me Dad because target. I think bashing himself against this position time and time again with the garrison in this building, with troops around here, with the bow force covering this position, I don't like that at all. Now, if the British player really wanted to cement his lead, and I'd really like to see him do this, he could actually um, establish a bow force just about here. And that would cover most of this middle area, and it may even be in range of the battle group headquarters. And you're sort of closing in on GG territory at that point because there will be a slight massacre whilst he sorts out his fallback point, uh, and you get to mow down a lot of troops falling back and going to the wrong place. And then you'll probably get the building, which is a large investment and a lot of tech for the overcommand player. So yeah, if he can establish a bow for right here, that would be, uh, I think, pretty cool. Move. ready for action. Now, I wonder what the range on a Bow 4 is. I've only seen them a few times so far. The British force is still very new. So the Bow 4 provides very heavy anti-air. Uh, it's very good against infantry. I believe it can counter soft and perhaps medium vehicles. Not sure. <coughs> and uh, it uh, has suppressive barrage. I believe that's veteran C1. Requires some squad cover. Required. Squad garrisoned in hold. Not sure how you use the suppressive fire then. Squad garrisoned in hold. Gun position ready to fight. Mm, I don't know. Maybe that means you have to put another squad in here or something. I don't know. And uh, ooh, this is awkward. Oh, uh, lost sound. Why can't I hear anything? Hmm. Uh, sorry. Just bear with me. Ah, there we go. Seems to be back now. Sorry about that. Slight te technical difficulty. Um, I've been using this headset for like. I don't know, nearly a decade now, and it's really good. And I'm lost to change it out. In fact, I've taken it apart and like soldered it a couple of times myself to repair it. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's just getting to that stage now, which is a wee bit old. But um, yeah. Anyway, it's back with me for now. The vicars here are still providing to be a thorny issue. And finally, we're seeing the double lag coming out. I was, I was, I was advocating a lag earlier on from Please Call Me Dad, and I think this is definitely the right choice. It'll allow him to counter this um, this bow for here, especially with two likes firing in. So that'll be really nice. Uh, a, uh, managing to catch up a little bit in terms of score is please call me dad. Um, owning as he does the the, the, the northmost uh, victory point, I'd love to see uh, Sturm Tiger Sage just go and take that back. And it appears that he's dispatching a Vickers gun to do that. Uh, see this Rocket and Werfer, like, let's take a look. It's done basically no damage, so this has kind of been a blank unit. Um, kind of a bit of a liability, to be honest, because it can be stolen as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a little too prophylactic. British player still not quite having upgraded to uh, the, the final tier of tech here, and I can only imagine that he's either allocating his manpower for another purpose or has forgotten that, as the fighting, just uh, if you look at the minimap, entering a slightly more uh, quiet moment. Uh, a light gun moving into position. I'd like to see him start barraging the Beaufort. Um, and we'll keep an eye on the fuel down here, and we'll see when Sturm Tiger manages to grab that final attack level for the uh, British forces. Well, it seems like he's uh, content to barrage this building in the meantime. With the light. There's two squads of Volks here, moving in against some Tommies, but the Tommies are in cover and they have a Bren gun. So I kind of get the feeling that this is a fight that the Volks are not going to take. Falling back already, and uh, oh, uh, so ah, of course, both uh, both players have now chosen their commander. Sturm Tiger Sage has gone for the artillery support, so this gives him uh, the option to call in the Valentine later on, the Sexton, which is kind of a cheap priest. Uh, he'll have the um, overwhelming perimeter Overwatch, which basically bombards all units in friendly territory for a while. He can call in a barrage of uh, 25 pounder howitzers, and he's just used the uh, early warning flares, which uh, kind of illuminates all frontline enemy territories. Very useful ability. Is the early warning flares are very useful. <coughs> 
Please Call Me Dad, on the other hand, has gone for the uh, Scavenge Doctrine. Now, this is one which uh, I'm sure everyone's very familiar with. He gets the Thorough Salvage, he gets the Jaeger Light Infantry, he can... Uh, oh, here's the Infiltration Grenade Package, he gets the Flak Panzer Ostwind call-in, and uh, finally he has the ability to uh, uh, call in a, an Artillery Barrage, which is kind of proportionate to the amount of stored uh, munitions he has. So it seems like we're going to see a 3-inch mortar emplacement here. Not sure about the placement. Um, yeah, sure, you want it forward so it's in range, and I believe here it might be able to ping the Battle Gripper Headquarters, maybe not. Um, but it's going to block line of sight for this uh, Bofors. So an alternative placement that I think I would have preferred probably would have been point. here. Uh, and that, that would probably almost certainly have been in range of the Battle Gripper Headquarters. And if you can put pressure on that, it's really hard times for the, uh, for the, for the Vermac player. Anyway. The tubes are starting to fire, and we're going to see, yep, they're exchanging with these Ligs, getting a great hit immediately. Forcing the Ligs to move. Uh, here are Vickers. Oh no, that's a Bren gun firing from the church here. And Please Call Me Dad is really getting suffocated a little bit here. Not able to make a move in the way that he would like. Going to use the Oswin call-in. And here comes an Oswin. Nice camo on that unit. This is bloody dangerous, boyo. Gotta love the regional accents for the British forces. Um, actually, I have to say one thing. Uh, oh, wow, he's, gonna, he's used the pyrotechnics package. He's going to call in an artillery barrage right onto the battle group headquarters. Oh, this is going to be really nice. Sorry, it's not the pyrotechnics pa package. The it's the uh, commander ability. Oh, and here comes some heavy shells flailing in now. Going to want to spread out his forces. His, uh, his, uh, his please call me dad. Ooh. Titanic shell whomping in. These medics are going to have to watch themselves. As the Oswind has been deployed to the north section of the map. Currently standing idle, he wants to move that out. The light gun still doing good work, but he needs to focus these emplacements. Yeah, there we go. The shells are coming in on the emplacements now. That's good. That's the kind of work you want to do. Oh my goodness, those mortars do look very scary when they land there, and he needs to reinforce, and he does, he's Johnny on the spot there, that's very good. The Schwerer Panzer HQ is now deployed and in this position, how much fuel? 120, 130 fuel being floated by Please Call Me Dad, so he'll have the option of going for a Panzer Force soon, uh, as we have a Valentine light tank joining the forces roster for the UKF, um, or our overcommand player can uh, save for the Panther, um, it is entirely up to him, now let's see... Oh, we still don't have the third level of tech from uh, Stormtaker Sage. Now floating 200 fuel. So possibly he's going to wait and put, call in uh, a number of sextons? Not quite sure. Uh, please call me Dad. Going to secure the northern victory point. So that's... Wait. At least he will if his troops are in it. There we go. So that's going to help him out a little bit in terms of the score stakes. And uh, I'd love to see him continuously barrage with the likes. He knows where those mortars are and he knows they ain't moving. And they are thrown in his side because they can hit like all the way up to here. Can you see that range if I click on this building? No, oh, that is... that is annoying. What if I tell them to Enemy do that? Trouble. Sorry about Try that. I can't see the range. But I'm guessing the range line sort of lies around here, somewhere like this. Um, yeah, oof, dearie me, these lags are just getting... just harassed by these uh, by these mortars, which are now up to two-star veterans. Let's right. take a look here. So you get the Creeping Smoke Barrage, they get uh, reduced time between barrages, and they finally get... Uh, Bretta prepare the emplacement into a strong defensive position, so I guess that makes them harder to kill once they get to that three-star veteran seat. Valentine here going to be repaired by the Royal Engineers, but it is being harassed. Uh, you know, Volks here with a Bren gun, going to get a grenade barrage into the building. And, oh, the Vickers crew immediately being destroyed. There's a couple of shells from the light guns coming in there to help out. The Oswind and this squad of Volks to the north is going to be doing some work here. And uh, there's no real answer to this Oswind. Now, if it can tank shots from a boat for, I'd love to see the Osman get a bit more aggressive, come on into here and stuff. The forward fallback point for the British forces is quite a vulnerable building. Oh, and here comes the uh, uh, five mm Harrator barrage. It gives me good effect, blocking a number of positions. So they were braced, though, so that's helped me to get some of the damage. The Valentine's here, just going to push forward again. Uh, where's the Rickettenworth there? Uh, oh, it's falling back because it's being overrun by two Valentines. Oh dear, this is danger. This is real danger. These two Valentines have an opportunity here. Ooh, one of them's very, very wounded, actually. But um, the anti-tankers are a little bit weak right now for, um, for Please Call Me Dad. 
so this is going to be interesting. Oh dear though, the Schwerer Panzer HQ hitting against the rear armor of that Valentine, and that is an overcommitment. You don't want to just drive through the middle of your opponent's base with a couple of light tanks, even if they are Valentines. Um, I think that was an overcommitment. I think that they would have been better used. Um, you could have been a real annoyance if you'd have brought them both around this way and poked in from here at this angle. Although I suppose that way the Raketenwerfer can counter them. So if you kill the Raketenwerfer and then bring them around from this angle, then things start being really annoying for your opponent. Either way, you don't want to commit too long though, because all, all of your opponent's units have uh, Panzer Shreks, of course. <coughs> so the two emplacements are now really weak, and I'd love to see the lag. Come on, use your lag barrages. Go, do it. Um, just, to, just to finish these off. There we go. I can hear the firing now. Bam, doing some good damage. So these mortars probably going to be taken out quite soon. The brace is being used, so well remembered there by the British player, but there they go. They're taken out, and probably uh, the next shell or hit, yep, is going to destroy the position. So finally making some headway into this deeply entrenched UKF uh, area of the map uh, is Please Call Me Dad. Seems like his uh, Ostwin was forced out of the northern area of the map, and here it is very damaged. He's going to want to uh, find... Why is this thing shaded red? That was weird. Uh, he's going to want to find uh, his pioneers. Does he actually have any pioneers? Uh, he does not have any pioneers, oh dear. So awkwardly enough, this is an Oswin which can't be repaired right now. That's interesting. Repairs completed. Oh, I see. There must be a Valentine somewhere using observation mode which is revealing all these units, I'm guessing. No? I don't know. Because they're all glowing red, and that usually means that something's revealing them. Anyway, taking a look at the scores, the Axis player down to 350, the UKF player down to 408, right, so a slight lead there for the Allied forces, as we have another armoured vehicle joining the front, and it is a Sexton, and he still hasn't gone for Tech 3. Stun Tiger Sage now floating 100 fuel, and uh, making heavy use of Sexton, uh, of, the, uh, of the Valentine, and now the Sexton joining the front. Now this... This could be uh, pretty good because um, the concentration, like the density of forces here, is pretty heavy. Finally, having established the mechanized regiment HQ, so able to repair this Oswind. Um, so, yeah, please call me dad, though. Nearly up to 200 fuel, and I wonder. I mean, he doesn't have the manpower right now to build a python, so a python, a panther. So, he might just get the panther out as soon as possible. But I wonder if uh, he's going to save the king tiger. I mean, it's not even that late in the in the game, and so far as um, so far as the scores go. So, an investment into King Tiger now could really pay. There's a lot of scope for that King Tiger to do damage in the remaining game. Because there's so much game remaining. So, uh, so that's pretty interesting. As a squad of Tommy's going to make a push through the north, or maybe they're content just to hold this victory point. And a brave squad of Volks starting to cap the middle point here. There's a Beaufort, there's a Valentine, there's a number of Tommies, and there's a Sexton in the hill. Emplacement under attack. Where is that Sexton? The Beaufort under attack, and now being besieged by the Ketwerfer. Very nice. So maybe he really does know what he's doing. Maybe the Ketwerfer is an appropriate counter to a Beaufort. Yeah, there we go, and that's that now. And now let's see, this Oswind, I don't think, can take out the uh, Valentine, but with the support of this uh, Ketwerfer... That is... Oh dear! Oh, he needs to back out! Back out the Valentine! Oh, is he too late? Oh, the final Raketenwerfer right on the edge of the weapon team's arc there. Sturm Tiger Sage being a little unlucky, you've got to, you've got to think. And the uh, anti-tank gun set up just too late, I think, there for, for the Tommies. And uh, looking at the forces balance in the top left and right of the screen, that was a grievous exchange. A couple of units being lost there, and only five remaining for the British forces against uh, a good seven decent combat units for the overcommand player. However, if you do look at his units, right, subtract the weapon teams, and he's actually got a tiny army. If these bolts get taken out, um, or are whittled down and able to be chased away, uh, this is an army that can be overrun really easily. He's got a lot of weapon teams. Um, he's fighting a good 400 manpower, so I think he clearly is saving up for that King Tiger. Has he got fuel conversion turned on? Yeah, he's saving for the King Tiger. Grenade barrage being used to displace these Tommies as another scuffle is going to start in the middle of the map. I'd love to see him just taking take this fight with his box still in the te in the um, command zone here, just because that way um, to take one of our points. yeah he'd be, he'd be doing something about the score line as well. They're able to flank round nicely here are the other forces, uh, forcing this Valentine back, forcing the anti tank gun back, and there's being not attacked. really any defence here with the British player. I mean, there's a squad of three Tommies here, ah, and here comes another squad of Tommies. This is what they needed. Because uh, this position here is getting dangerously exposed. The uh, forward, the uh, forward assembly is under fire now from Likes. The Raketenwerfer is going to get caught out by the Bren gun-equipped Tommies, and that will go down quickly. One thinks. 
The legs are going to smack those, those Tommies around a little bit, though. And the, uh, the Volk's moving up to five stars, so they're quite poked. They're going to chase down these to uh, Tommies. It. I'd love to see them just take this fight from this little bit of soft cover here and then be able to decap the zone at the same time. But maybe they're going to leave that to the uh, Jaeger Light Infantry. Um, well, just decap the point. Yep, there we go, there we go. And the Oswin now repair is going to come in, force these Tommies back. But they're not going far, they're only going here, so if you can just move the Oswin to here, use the Shreks to push back this Valentine. This is a fight which the Open Command player can take, and he does. He moves the Oswin into position, and at this stage, uh, these are British forces. Turn off your retreat point and pull them back to your main base. He's going to lose his Tommies and all the veterans see on those units. There goes one three-star unit. So the anti-tank gun now flanked by the Oswin. And uh, with this exchange, the British forces are essentially broken. Reduced to a Valentine. Whoa, get this, uh, get this Osman down there, buddy. Oh, man. The enemy have destroyed a forward position. I mean, uh, looking at the top left and top right, that tells the story of this battle. And um, if, uh, Sturm t if, if Please Call Me Dad can just actually take this point, my goodness, he really needs to take that point. To take a point from us. Then, uh, yeah, he's firmly, firmly in the driving seat of this game. Um, so a nice little move there, a nice little move with an unorthodox army with very few frontline units, a lot of weapons, Enemy, and just an Austin for point. armored support. He actually has the fuel and the manpower, I believe, for that um, King Tiger. How much manpower is a King Tiger these days? 720. So he's about to have the manpower for that King Tiger. And um, right, if this game know. wasn't in the bag before, uh, after that little fight, I think the King Tiger will make it in the bag, you know, for realsies, you know, totes for loads, you know. <coughs> Line's been cut. Fanning out his forces, making a land grab in the north. I like this. Just taping it up. But to his credit, Sturm Tiger Sage, not GGing at this juncture. He's got a good buffer of uh, victory points. Base defense is thumping out shells. He's got a sexton to work with, so it's not like he can't um, he can't attack at this moment. Royal Royal Engineers coming to the field. Uh, sorry, uh, Tommy's coming into the field. Royal Engineers were existing already. And uh, he's going to make a probe out into the north, going to displace these Jaeger Lane infantry. Yep, very rapidly get out, out of there. And... So yeah, to his credit, Sturm Tiger Sage, he's not throwing in the towel just yet. Uh, I'd be, I'll, I'll be intrigued to see just how much work he can get done here. The King Tiger is about half complete now. To be honest, if you're in this situation with this few units, I mean, he's got actually, he's got like 500 vampire and a decent amount of fuel, so he could get a Cromwell. Oh, of course he can't get a Cromwell because he doesn't have this building. Ah, uh, that's difficulties. Yeah, it is difficulties. Here comes the Oswin again. I don't think the Oswin's in a great position, actually. I think he wants to get out of there. Your cat worker is what's going to be needed to brush aside this balance. But he's getting hit really badly by the Piats. I don't think you want to be that close, and I certainly think you want to be moving. The Piats, of course, um, they don't fire a rocket propelled projectile like the, uh, the Super or the uh, Panzer Shrek. Um, they're a little bit like a sort of really cheap panzer pass or something. So, against moving targets, against moving vehicles, of limited use. And here comes another Sexton. My goodness, Stam Tiger Sage really committed to this artillery build, I'm fair. I mean, the Sextons are flailing in for good hits. Actually, I say that, let's check the damage. No, no, they haven't really been well. The Sexton, which has been on the field for a while, only has four kills and uh, two thirds of level efficiency, so perhaps not doing that much damage. I think he just needs to get them in range of this, this lovely concentration here. Anyway, here comes the King Tiger. Nice, nice camo on that as well, very imposing. And uh, is he going to buy at the MG42? Uh, he can afford it, and it is worth it for the King Tiger simply because it's. Uh, does so much damage, and having that extra pinto mounted gun just really tears apart the infantry. You know, you can you can have a fight, think it's done nothing, look at its kill count, and mowed down like 12 guys in that fight, and you're like, wow. We're losing a capture point. So anyway, uh, I'm I'm very concerned now. This this ought to be GG as soon as he sees the King Tiger. And the, the only reason I say that, I'm not trying to be defeatist, is what anti-tank does the British player have right now? Uh, not enough is the answer. Not nearly enough. He's got a couple of Piats and a Valentine. Which is insufficient. I, it's, yep, sad to say. So, the King Tiger comes out of Fog of War. I mean, he had to imagine that the fuel was being spent somewhere. And indeed, that is GG. There is no answer for this King Tiger. Sturm Tiger Sage 6 put up a great fight. Uh, I really like the way that he uh, garrisoned this position. He entrenched it so so hard. But unable in the end to, uh, to take the W. Um, as the dual legs were able to uh, dismantle this uh, this uh, fortification here with uh, with support from a decent flanking of infantry, the Volks, the Rakettenwerfer, able to do good damage to these structures. The Oswin coming in and uh, never really being answered. I mean, it wasn't super great, but it was very useful. 
and uh, yeah, able to take apart this position. Um, if I were Sturm Tiger Sage, I think if he'd have built that bow for here when he was in command of this region, that would have meant that taking this area of the map would have been very hard for the Axis player. Um, and indeed the Beaufort might even have been in range of this building here, and that would have been like almost a GG moment. Like It would have been like oh, a heavy loss for the Overcommand player to sustain there. I also think um, the building of this uh, Morse position, if it was just here, then it could um, then it could flail away at this uh, this building, keep hitting the forces, the retreating squads and so on. I just think it would have been a real thorn in the side. And if you have the Morse position here with the Beaufort here, that makes the Morse position very hard to assault. It pretty much means that the overcommand player has to come around this way to do so. And if you had the Vickers in this building, or even a Vickers in this building, I mean, that's just looking disgusting at that point. So, uh, yeah, so there is that. Um, I also think with the Sextons, like, I'm not fully aware what he was doing with them. I wasn't really following where he was barraging. But one of those Sextons was on the field for a good while, maybe ten minutes, maybe more. And I think if he was constant barraging this building... Um, I mean, you just need one or two lucky hits to blast away these high-level vo high veterancy Volks when they fall back and that sexton starts being a real asset. So, yeah, um, I would say that those those are the things that I would have changed were I playing a Sturm Tiger Sage, or at least do, if I had all the time in the world and observer mode and I was uh, Sturm Tiger Sage, of course, in the heat of battle, uh, you don't always make the calls just, you know, that, that you can make when you've got no fog of war and you're in observer mode, calm as you like with a cup of tea. Uh, so, anyway, yes, that concludes this battle. Thank you very much for watching. This is Magquite842 signing out.